So what was going on in the netherworld? Can we even find out? Of course we can find out. It's just nobody's asking. So let us look very briefly at the dominions. So as it states here, as I mentioned, that the dominions... Dominion is, is that of the underworld. Okay? Like the whole domination thing comes from the underworld. So these entities specifically were known as the smiting gods. This is also where we get our word smith from. Uh, they are builders in that respect, okay? So these smiting gods were slaver, they were slaving gods. This is why they always have something in their hand. And you'll see this a few times. They always have something in their hand that they're hitting something with. It's a smiting God. And most of the time, and you can look at even hundreds of pictures, most of the time there's always a human being smitten. Because these are slaver gods. So remember how the whole thing happened is with slavery in the United States and they showed that masters were constantly whipping the slaves, right? It's like this thing with masters that they want to whip the slave. Okay? So... This is the energy of dominion, and it comes about through a specific type of ritual being done on earth to this very day. But it's important for the connection to be made that Nimrod is Osiris. When you understand, I believe that's the Atef crown, which is the crown of lower Egypt. It's basically the crown of the ruler of the underworld. Anyone that says they're the king of the underworld in this case you know what I'm saying? I was thinking about who was that MJG or A ball when the king of the underground my gangster would never fail you, you gotta understand that th this is everywhere they're worshiping the king of the netherworld who is Osiris okay it's like the place when things didn't go well for you just as you learn in Toltec dreaming, when you're going down, when you're walking downstairs in your dream and everything is going down, you're going to the underworld. And there's a reason why. Even to this day, I'm gonna, in this day, I'm gonna break down clearly why it's the underworld that this is taking place in, right? Specifically. So in this underworld, so quote unquote, Jesus is a king of the underworld. Jesus is Baal. Jesus is also uh, Thoth, right? Savior gods. And let me just get my picture here that was up earlier today. Give me one quick second here. Here it is. It's the only one I didn't load in. The one on the left, Carl, that's Charlemagne. So that's the, immor the immortal Charlemagne as they call him, right? That's Jesus, <laughs> right? And then right here, that's, that's Oscar, right? Who is Oscar? Osiris. Because anyone who gets an Oscar is a car, a vehicle, a transportation for Osiris. Because they worship Osiris. And 
this thing has gone on long enough. <laughs> like even the day I was like, man, it's wild because Osiris is all about court. The netherworld is all about court. They're all about legal proceedings as I'm gonna show you here in a moment. And that's how they convict and bind and give time. They have another process that when a person gets into the netherworld after the accusers accuse them, and just like a court hearing, they're found accused through their mind, then the ghost moves in, also known as sometimes the Holy Ghost, and offers a deal to infuse them with a certain amount of energy for an orbit of time because only the ghost can reanimate that person again. So this person will be wanting to come back in the world, but will make a contract with the ghost in order to basically live only 50 years, 60 years, to be able to see their loved ones and be with their loved ones again, only under the condition that they forget everything. And that in the end though, when it's time to draw nigh, then the scales are weighed again, the same thing plays out again, except for the bargaining chip gets even crazier, meaning the ghost then charges more interest. That is why the debt-based system functions because the whole Catholic Church, Christianity, Jesus, the whole thing is just about getting people's sins, their debts, getting them to believe that they are guilty of these sins and thus need this, this particular system to absolve them of the sins, which is like a few Hail Marys and a few other things. And then from that point, you're now in the hands of the vicar or the Salic priesthood, which we'll talk about here in a moment. So just realize it's court. Court is in session down there. So look at this then, you know, to take a quick moment to gain your sovereignty. Because some are like, well, man, I should turn this off. This is too much for me. Some are like, bring it. And some are in between. <laughs> so let's just clarify very brief briefly here, where is your raft? Actually, you know what? Forget a raft. We need an entire boat, preferably Donzi Motors, <laughs> and a few jets. Where is it? It's right here, okay? So I'm reading the Canons of Sovereignty, which is like, remember, this is 5,000. So I think there's 10,000 of these. Dropping gym after gym after gym. So I just had to like, you know, pick and choose. It was like candy of what is specific. However, I found a space that summarized the entire thing about what do we do about this? What kind of arbitration or what kind of right do we have? Canon 5463, 5463. By definition, the mind of all men and women is absolute sovereign over their body through a true trust granted through divine right of use by divine trust. Therefore, no person, entity, spirit, or force may abrogate nor impose, interpose themselves into or above such a sacred and inviolable covenant. Okay? So if you're still here and you haven't lost your mind, see, when a person loses their mind, that's because the force has taken them completely because they lose their, their sovereign altogether. They, they lose the ownership of the only sovereign thing they have, which is their mind. Now watch how this, this works. This is not just a statement. You know how they tell you free your mind or the, and the rest will follow? Okay, free your mind and the rest will follow. Okay, why? You see, because the mind, it doesn't belong to anybody. We're all sharing this collective consciousness thing called a mind. And it doesn't belong, like even their hands, they can say, oh, well, your hands. Uh. Nuki Seaton created your hand. That hand belongs to Nuki Seaton. <laughs> so that just means that in there, and then the cues are like, so everything that you did with those hands, we're now gonna take account for that. And I'm gonna show you how that works in the netherworld. However, with your mind though, your mind can be free and you are your mind. Like when I died, I was still thinking and it blew me. It's like, so we're dead. How are you thinking? Truly life is not in the body. But see why you're here because of how this was made because this was the created thing. Unless you have control over your mind, being completely 
sovereign over your body, then your body will accuse you because the things that you're doing with your body is what is brought forth in the court. Now, let me show you. Your body, the desire of your heart, I give you this. 